Welcome to part two of the Fisher's Log demo. Fisher's Log is a program that makes it very easy to maintain a fishing log, organize your trips, and analyze your fishing data. In this part of the demo, we're going to look at its analysis tools using my 2009 fishing log. To get to the tools, you go to the menu bar, click on Analysis Tool. We'll start off with a simple and fun query. First, we'll tweak the date to look at just the 2009 season. And we'll hit Plot All Fish. Now, this is fun to look back and see what was caught in this particular year. We see there was 125 trips, and these were all the catches that were made. And if you mouse over a particular bar, this will show you exactly how many fish of a given species that was caught. Although this is fun, a lot of care has been put into Fisher's Log in order to provide anglers with a tool that can help them spot fishing patterns and make better fishing decisions. So let's look at some other types of queries. Let's look at the situation. Imagine that you wake up to a northerly wind and you say, well, where do I usually do best on a north wind? This is pretty simple. You can say, uh, show me my average trip rating by location, where you can choose wind direction and pick north, hit plot result, and very quickly you'll see all of your trip ratings for north winds grouped by location. So this could give you some idea of where you might want to fish based on your previous experiences. So there's numerous ways to look at your trips in terms of trip ratings. Let's look at catch patterns. We'll take one in particular. I do a lot of fluke fishing. So let's look at the total number caught of course, the program has learned what kinds of fish I catch, and it knows that fluke is one of them, and we'll do by location where all conditions. So I basically fish three different locations for fluke, and we can see that one of them has produced many more fluke than the others. But totals don't always tell the story. Sometimes averages are more important. Let's take a look at trip average. So just a small tweak to the query and hit plot result. And we see that buoy 5 is still the more productive location showing 53 fluke per trip. Very productive area. In New York State, fluke need to be 21 inches to be kept. So what I'm interested in is where do I do best in terms of putting fish in the cooler and taking them home and eating them. Okay, so what we could do is we could look at the trip average and instead of looking at number caught, we can look at number caught larger than and fluke we measure in inches. They need to be 21 inches, so I'll be interested in fluke that have been recorded that are over 20 inches. And again, by location, and so forth. We hit plot result. Now we see that although buoy 5 produced many more fluke, actually buoy 7 has produced more of the larger fluke on an average basis and we can just tweak the query to get a full accounting of fluke caught over 20 inches. And in 2009 uh, buoy 7 did outfish buoy 5 both in total and in average, despite the fact that the total catches there were greater at buoy 5, the larger fish were actually caught at buoy 7. So this is a very interesting query that can help you see where you do best, in this case, for size of a particular species. Let's look at conditions. I do a lot of striped bass fishing. Let's look at trip average, and instead of number caught, Let's look at poundage. I'm going to be looking at locations that I fish for quality striped bass, so I'm very interested in the poundage that I catch there. We'll choose striped bass um, by, in this case, let's analyze a location based on wind direction. And we'll pick location, 
and we'll choose one from the list, a location that is on Long Island's south shore, and hit plot result. These are very interesting results. This is a south-facing shoreline on Long Island's south shore. We see that on onshore winds that have an angular component, I average approximately 75 pounds of bass per trip. If the wind is straight on or straight off, I do the worst, only averaging approximately 20 pounds per trip. On trips made with the wind being between south and southwest, so it's coming in on a slight angle, I still do better than if the wind was coming straight in, but not quite as good as on a southwest wind. So these are very, very interesting results. And the 75 pounds per trip turns out to be somewhat of a significant number. If we look at another location on Long Island South Shore that I fish for large striped bass. Now I fish this location only under certain winds. When I have the winds, I fish there. And you can see that almost all of them show up at around 75 pounds per trip. So it appears that when I have good conditions for these particular locations, I'll average in about that um, poundage range. Another way to look at an area is, let's consider this with, you know, we're looking at poundage here, but what about um, for larger fish in particular? So what we can do here is look at trip average. We can do number caught larger than, and we're interested in pounds for striped bass, and we're interested in 20 pounders, so we'll look for fish that are over 19 pounds by wind direction, location, and hit plot result. And we see quite nicely there seems to be some correlation here um, in terms of when the larger fish are caught. Now, take in mind this is um, done with one year's worth of data. As more years of data are added, um, you can expect these patterns to firm up even more. There are numerous ways for Fisher's Log to crunch the data. Um, these are just a few. Okay, Fisher's Log runs on Windows and most Macs. You can download it from fisherslog.com. There's a free seven-day trial period. A lifetime license is just a one-time fee of $19.95.